If you've been watching any of my latest vlog videos, you'll know that I've gone through a pretty radical change in my lens setup recently. As a consequence of that, I've had to go through a pretty radical change on my filter setup as well. So previously, all my main landscape photography lenses were a 77 millimeter thread, and this made it nice and easy to just buy one set of affordable circular filters that I could use across the lenses, no matter what I chose to actually shoot with. However, things have changed. And since I've purchased my new lenses, my 70 to 200 is a 67 millimeter thread, and my 24 to 70 is an 82 and my wide angle lens is a 77 millimeter thread so this makes it totally incompatible to have one set of circular filters so i've got rid of the circular filters and i've replaced them with a lee filter set i haven't had a huge amount of time to actually shoot with the new filters but i thought i'd film this little vlog just to give a rundown of what i've actually selected and my rationale for why i've done so the first thing i need to point out though is these Lee filters are really, really fiddly and I would highly recommend not using the standard pouches that you get with all your individual Lee filters. It will become an absolute nightmare to shoot in the field. And on my last vlog, which I'll link to here, um, I was on the edge of a breakdown <laughs> because all the individual pouches were just driving me up the wall and when you're in the field and you're kind of in a tight time frame to get the shot you want it's the last thing you want to be doing fiddling around with um with gear so i've bought this filter pouch bag and i think it's a low pro yep and so far it's fantastic so i think if you're going to get a lee filter set get one of these so the first thing is the lens adapters and these allow you to attach the Lee filter set to the front of your lens. I've gone for a range of these to suit and fit all my various different lenses, but they're pretty pricey for what is essentially just a ring of metal, but that's Lee kit full stop, I think. Um, I've also gone for the 100 Lee filter holder set, and I've got three filter layers in here to hold up to three filters. And then I've also got the polarizer fil fitting on the front that allows me to also put the polarizer. So up to four filters can be used in this setup. So I'll just attach that to the front of my camera here and I'll show you the actual filters that I've gone for. Now that the filter holder is attached to the cameras, let's talk filters. The very first one is the Lee 10 stop filter, probably the second most important filter I've purchased. Now you can replicate the effects of this filter in post-processing, but it's a bit of a ball ache, frankly. So I like an easy life, so I've gone for this. Let's pop it in the camera and see how it looks. This filter cuts out 10 stops of light. As you can see, as I apply the filter, it's like the camera is going blind. So it's very important to get your focal point set before you apply this filter and pop the camera into manual mode. Otherwise, it will not know what to do when you try to take the shot in autofocus because it won't be able to find anything to focus on. Um, this filter is really, really useful for getting long exposures in bright conditions like today. And you can see just behind me, oh, I've got a beautiful little lighthouse here. And on this composition, I can actually shoot 25 seconds at F14 ISO 64 in these really, really bright conditions. So that allows me to smooth out the sea and get a really, really nice effect there's not too much movement in the water today, but no doubt this is gonna be a very, very useful filter for taking coastline shots. The next filter in my lens kit is the Lee Little Stopper, and this stops six stops of light. It pretty much does exactly what the 10 stopper does, but there are gonna be some circumstances where 10 stops is a bit overkill, and this might be useful in those circumstances. I think arguably it's probably gonna have less use than the 10 stopper, but I think it's a useful filter to have. Also, when combined with the 10 stopper in the filter holder, that gives me some serious stop and power for some extreme long exposures during the middle of the day. So I'm really looking forward to experimenting with that. Let's pop it in the holder and see how it looks. You can see that at the same settings, this filter is only actually giving me two seconds of exposure here. The light conditions are changing quite a bit, but I think that's probably quite a good guide. So it's probably gonna be not very useful for coastal exposures, getting those smoothing out of the sea effects, but it will be very useful for taking pictures of rivers and waterfalls. 
The next filter is the Lee Circular Polarizer, and this is probably the most important filter and the one that's gonna get the most use. Now, when applied and span round, this adjusts the strength of the polarization effect, and that essentially allows me to take the shine off water surfaces, deepen the saturation and contrast in the image, particularly in blue skies like today. So I'll just apply it to the camera now, and as you can see, as I spin it round, you can see how the image quite dramatically changes. And this is, is an effect that's very, very difficult, if not impossible to replicate in post-processing. The next filter in my set is the two-stop soft edge graduated filter. Now, graduated filters. These are a bit alien to me. I'm not a big user of them and I never have been. And the main reason for that is the cameras that I've had in recent years, particularly the D850, have got enough dynamic range for me to get the images how I want them in post-processing. However, seeing as I'm, I got the actual filter set, I thought I may as well buy some of these and give them a go. And a lot of professional landscape photographers swear by these and their rationale tends to be along the lines of they want to try and get the image right in the field and they want to minimize the amount of time they spend sat in front of a computer and I get that, I understand that, so I'm going to give them a good go and see if I can learn to love them. Essentially in a nutshell what it does is when you've got a scene like behind me for example where the sky is a little bit brighter than the actual sea the graduated filter allows you to actually even that exposure and avoid any overexposed or underexposed parts of the image. When I pop the soft edge into the filter holder, you can see that it brings the sky down. Now, the reason for soft edge is the transition is more gradual between the darkened bits and the clear bits of glass. And that's particularly useful when you've got a landscape such as the, this lighthouse behind me, where the shapes are quite complex and they're not even and there's not a straight flat horizon. That soft graduation makes the effect more natural. The final filter in my kit is the two-stop hard edge graduated filter. Now this pretty much does exactly what the soft edge does, but as the name suggests, the gradient between light and dark is more pronounced and hard. This is particularly useful when you've got a very defined and prominent horizon in a shot, such as in a seascape. Now, when I pop this into the filter holder, you can see that it's quite a harsh effect in this scene and it probably doesn't suit it at all. But if I was to spin the camera out to sea, this would be perfect. So that's it for my kit. Now, I may well choose to expand these filters in the months ahead, but for now, I'm just gonna to stick to what I've got. First impressions are, this is a really professional setup and it feels really, really well built. So I'm very much looking forward to shooting with this in the coming weeks and months ahead and getting some proper images. I'm in no doubt whatsoever that this is going to deliver amazing professional results. There are a number of downsides that I've noted so far and I think these are worth keeping in mind. First, the cost. They're stupid expensive. They really, really are. So. I am expecting big things from my images ahead. <laughs> they're they're going to have to work hard to justify that cost because they are, they are significantly more than standard circular screw-on filters. However, the rationale for me is because I had different diameters for all my lenses, by the time I'd actually duplicated my circular filter set across all those lenses, it probably would have worked out to be more than the actual Lee setup. So that's my justification. <laughs> Um, the other downside is they're slightly fiddly. They're, they're going to be a little bit of a pain in the ass to use, I feel, at times. But there's something to be said about actually popping on your filter holder and sliding in your individual filters. It's almost got a therapeutic sort of slant to it, so part of me actually kind of likes that in a funny kind of way. So, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to that in the, uh, in the weeks ahead. And the final downside is I'm going to have to be, take very, very, very good care of these because I feel that they're going to scratch tremendously easily, <laughs> particularly if you're doing coastal shots in and around sand. These things will just get shredded by it. So I'm a bit clumsy with my gear, so I'm a little bit fearful on that front. So um, yeah, check in in future vlogs to see how I get on with that. But um, yeah. That draws to a conclusion my little summary on the Lee filter setup. Um, I hope this has been useful and provides a little bit of insight into my gear. I'm still finding my feet with them, so I'm no expert on the filters, but um, yeah, these are my thoughts so far. Really looking forward to shooting with them going forwards. 
If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like or add your comments. If you use leaf filters yourself, I'd be um, really interested to hear your thoughts on them. And um, yeah, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.